weeks ago, Oh Fudge Muffins posed an interesting question on Beyond the Trailer's YouTube discussion page. Why do comic book movies like The Avengers and X-Men get so much fan and critic love, while movies in the DC Universe get slammed with caution and dislike, she wondered. Is it the directors, writers, actors? Or is it just the original depth of the characters? Does her frustration sound familiar? It does to me, as this question pops up time and time again all over the internet from frustrated DC fans. Some, due to that frustration, have even accused me of being a DC hater. But in reality, I love DC. The first comic I ever wrote was Justice League Unlimited number 41, and I actually share your frustration. Only mine is with how Warner Brothers is interpreting arguably the most famous characters of the comic book medium. However, didn't Marvel just take a lot of heat for how they reinterpreted the Mandarin? Why has that criticism seemed to fade away, while it looks like nobody is willing to forget that Superman snapped Zod's neck? Let's start at the beginning, comics, because I think that this all stems from the fundamental difference in how Marvel and DC treat their characters on the page. Marvel comics are largely soap operas, and an important element in any soap opera is melodrama. That means that characters are put through the emotional ringer on a weekly basis, and with superheroes, the physical ringer too. And perhaps because of that, Marvel has always seemed more flexible with its characters who, to be honest, are defined in broad strokes. Sure, they have definitive personality traits, but you'd be hard-pressed to find any of the strong moral codes that are so prevalent over at DC. Yes, DC's characters are practically set in stone, so much so that when comic creators are inspired to play with comic book archetypes, they look to DC. Not only are DC's characters simple templates that lend themselves well to abstract thinking, but they also cry out for change. Since DC itself is so reluctant to test its characters, other creators and fans are inspired to do so themselves. Now, another hurdle for DC is that while Marvel's characters are relatively new to the mainstream, even Spider-Man, for decades everyone has been familiar with characters like Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Well, vaguely familiar. In fact, mainstream audiences are really only familiar with those strong moral codes I just mentioned, what these characters stand for. Batman is driven by his parents' murder, forever lost in his grief, and would never pick up a gun. Superman is a Boy Scout who represents America at the height of its world supremacy, even if that is no longer the case today. And Wonder Woman has been effectively co-opted by women's rights. Richard Donner played into that Superman image perfectly, and the resulting film has had little criticism. Bruce Timm and Paul Dini also honored these simple rules with great success. And for his first two films, so did Christopher Nolan. You'll notice that most of the critiques against his third film, The Dark Knight Rises, revolve around Nolan choosing to take steps away from Batman's core principles. Right away, the idea that Bruce Wayne would stop being Batman just doesn't sit right. And audiences were game to see Superman reflect America's current relationship with the world in Man of Steel, yet they couldn't stomach the murder of Zod because, again, it went against the strong moral code of the character. Going back to the Mandarin, hardcore Iron Man fans, and truthfully there aren't many, were offended that Marvel turned Tony Stark's chief villain into a joke. Yet it's proven only a momentary frustration, as what was really lost? The Mandarin was never as well defined as DC's villains. In fact, the root of fan frustration is not that the Mandarin was reinterpreted, but that Tony Stark was robbed of the dark villain the trailers for the film had promised. Perhaps with a different marketing campaign, it never would have even been an issue. And as Marvel continues to tell the story of Trevor Slatterly with the short film All Hail the Chief, he could indeed become the definitive version of the Mandarin, because one doesn't exist in the first place. Now, a chief criticism against Warner Brothers is that it doesn't seem to respect its DC characters, or even worse, have any faith in them. But I'd say the real problem is that Warner Brothers doesn't understand them, nor fans' relationship with these characters. I strongly believe that audiences would go along with a great deal of changes as long as Warner Brothers and the talent they put in charge of these films adhere to the strong moral codes that DC itself is responsible for setting in stone with decades of storytelling choices, or perhaps more accurately, non-choices. If fans and critics felt that the DC movies have what any good movie should have, a strong bedrock, then perhaps they would enjoy the love that Marvel movies currently enjoy. And those amazing Spider-Man movies. As for the X-Men, well, despite a strong start, I think at this point fans are just keeping quiet as we patiently wait and pray for the rights to someday revert back to Marvel. Have you seen Quicksilver in Days of Future Past? I think Singer might have been hanging out with Joel Schumacher. So, why do you think there seems to be so much DC hate? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.